This is under all ideal circumstances, um, exactly the right road, exactly the right speed, and so on. But this isn't always the case. Okay, so this is case one without friction. Now we're going to work it out with friction. Okay, I'm going to need to rub this off, so I hope everyone's got this diagram. But I want to leave that there, and we're going to do this again. Okay. Would this be like two different parts? Say it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like tell me, tell me what supposed speed I'm supposed to go around, and then part B might be, or in fact I have an example up my sleeve. Um, well, if I go around at this speed, what will the forces be? Now, while I'm doing this, I'd like you to draw a new diagram, but this time, draw this guy without all the resolution stuff on it. Just draw me the normal, and then I want you to tell me. Where will friction be going? Where will it be facing? Okay, I'm not going to tell you just yet. There are actually a few different places I could put it. At least two. I want you to draw your diagram first. Don't put any of the force resolution stuff on it. This diagram will need two extra diagrams to resolve those forces. Okay, so draw your banked track. There's not much on my diagram just yet. I'm about to put on friction force. Okay, now the friction force, remember, it's about, it's, I mean, it's on the ground. It's on the ground, right? It can only make you go from where your perspective is, either uh, for you, left or right, okay, left or right. So therefore, once I have banked the track, it's either gonna go up the hill or down the hill, right? Depending on how fast I'm going. Now, I'm now picking a direction for this just on my diagram. I wanna put the positive direction on there, the positive axis. What do you think makes sense as the direction for the positive axis? Mm. That way. <laughs> okay, all right, now, in reality, you really can choose either way. You really can. I prefer to put the force of friction up the hill, and I'll give you two reasons for that, okay? Um, by the way, this is called L for lateral force, because it goes sideways relative to the car, which is lateral is a fancy word for sideways. So far, we've been defining in into the center as negative, right? I think that makes sense. Like negative is smaller numbers over this way. Positive means you're going out, okay? Um, you will find, many textbooks define it exactly the other way around, but you will find everything just comes down the wash, just all of our negative signs are different and you will interpret them in the opposite way, okay? So I'm gonna have L facing up that way. We're gonna get to resolve its forces in a moment. Let's have a look at this actual concrete example and use all of these results we just showed on the left. If you've got a highway, it's going to have to make a turn around a radius of a kilometre. We want it to be designed for 120 kilometres per hour. What is the angle of the embankment? That's the first question. Okay. So I want you to have a look at what we have established over here. What am I going to use? This one here? No. Um, really, you should be doing all of this, right? So I'm just going to tr try and treat this question as if we just did all of this, okay, off of the diagram. I think I'm going to go for this one, okay? So this is, see how what's going on is, they've, got, they've defined for you a speed limit, okay? So they're like, this is how fast we want you to go around this corner. We want you to go this speed, so therefore we want to design this so there's no friction for that speed. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead, let's find what theta is. Um, I need to know, with all these pieces of information, how do I feed them into there, okay? Now V, 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 V. What units is V in? Meters per second. Meters per second, this is 120 kilometers per hour. So let's quickly convert. V equals 120 kilometers is 120,000 meters for how many seconds? 3,600, 3, 60 minutes, 60 seconds per minute. So 3600 0, 0 seconds. Okay, um, that's not going to come out it's as a whole number. Okay, so 100 on 3 meters per second. Yep. Okay, there's a velocity. You have a look at this. What else am I going to need to know? Radius. Radius, that's just 1,000 uh, 1, 1, 1, meters. And then gravity, let's just go with 9.8. Okay, can you go ahead? Can you evaluate what theta is? Oh, okay, good. Okay, we got there? Yeah? So don't forget to square, don't forget to yes. be in the right mode, etc. Okay? <laughs> good. Wonderful. I have an angle. So if I want to go at 120 kilometers per hour, this is the angle this is supposed to be. And yes, it is quite shallow because, yeah, that's a pretty big radius. So far, so good. Okay. So now, like this is the perfect situation. And what I've got here is this lateral force, the friction force, is zero. That's why I haven't accounted for it. That's why I can use all of this stuff. 
okay? But if this is the angle and I'm not traveling at this speed, then there will be a force either this way or that way. Okay, now I want you to think for a second, right? The lateral force at the moment, I've got it pointed positive direction out here, right? So that's like skidding out, like I was showing on you on the diagram before, of instead of going around like that, you go wee, because there's not enough friction, okay? So would I be traveling faster to make a lateral force up that way, or would I be traveling slower? Which way am I supposed to adjust my velocity? Okay, so I'm trying to work out, let's just go with faster, okay? If I go faster, which way do you think friction force will be pushing? Yeah. Will friction force be pushing that way, or will friction force be pushing that way? Okay, now what you need to remember is friction force is a reaction force, okay? It's a reaction force. So what you've got is you're going around the turn, and if you're going too fast, friction force is trying to keep you in, but it's not enough. It's not enough, okay? So this bank track, see this normal force? See where it's pointing, right? So it's kind of giving you a hand. It's trying to give you a hand, right? So therefore, if you're going too fast, friction force is gonna be the thing that's pulling you in, okay? So your, your, your tires are gonna screech, okay? Because friction force is like, ah, oh, don't go that way, I'm gonna pull you this way, okay? So, if the velocity is greater than the optimum speed, okay? In my scheme, where I've put the positive lateral force, the positive sideways, positive friction force, it's going that way. If you're going too fast, L is going to be negative. Do you see it? Right? L's trying to hold you in. It's trying to hold you in. Okay. All right, now let's just turn the table around. If, um, if grandma hops behind the wheel, right, and she's like, no, this is too fast, okay? So she slows right down. She's like, 120 k's an hour, are you kidding? I'm gonna, I'm gonna run over some people. So she slows right down, okay? So she's pottering along this bank track. Now think, think. If you're traveling along and you're not going fast enough, right? Which way is friction force gonna go? Yeah, well, your car is just gonna go, it's just gonna fall, roll down the hill, right? So friction force is trying to stop you do that, doing that. It's a reaction force, right? So if the velocity is too slow, then L is going to be facing on the outside to stop you rolling down the hill. Does that make sense? So this is trying to stop you going wherever you're meant to be, wherever you're naturally tending toward. Okay? That's your tire's job after all. So let's go with two speeds. Let's go with um, this plus 50%. So that's 180 k's an hour. That's pretty quick. Okay? If we're going 180 k's an hour, what will be the friction force? And then let's, uh, let's halve that, okay? So if we halve, that's 90 k's an hour. That's still pretty quick, but it's slower than the design speed, okay? So what I've got is, what will the friction force be if we go at 180 k's an hour? What will the friction force be if you're going at 90 k's an hour? And there's one more piece of information you need apart from speed. I've got a radius already. Like this situation, I mean. This situation, this angle, thick. You're driving along, right? There's you on like a bicycle, okay? And off you go, right? And then, and then, right behind you, there's a semi-trailer pulling through, right? Takes the same turn, same speed. Are you guys gonna have the same friction force? No, we need mass. No, we need mass. Okay, so just for the sake of it, I'm going to define mass to be 1,270 kilos, wow. okay? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Which is approximately the weight of my car, okay? Uh, this is, uh, yes, I, um, I broke my scales at home. No, I looked it up, okay? So <laughs> this, is the, this is the mass of a, um, a, a normal-sized small sedan, okay? Um, with that many people in it, okay, that won't change very much if I got in. So let's go with that number, 1,270. Think, think carefully. Think carefully. I'm going to give you a one or two minute head start. You've already, you've already nutted out all of the resolution of forces for the normal force, but you haven't touched this lateral sideways friction force yet. You're going to need to resolve that too. And just like I did here, we want to stay stationary, right? We want there to be uniform circular motion. How is everything going to combine when you've got this third force at play? Why don't you get a head start on me and then I'll show you my solution.